Hey y'all, today we're gonna take care of old skillet head. Doe day. Just got back from a really neat hunt that happens on the Tejon Ranch in conjunction with the Mule Deer Foundation. We do a uh, youth doe hunt to get the numbers kind of back in check and get the youth involved in the sport. So we take five does and then the next day we take five pigs and this is our harvest the kids were 100 percent successful and does are my absolute least favorite skull to do i struggle with them they're a pain in the tail you would think they'd just be as easy as anything but they're not they got kind of a funny little lump on their head right here that always tends to oil up so today i'm going to show you how to do a doe and see if we can't get them perfect thanks for watching All right, y'all, you're going to get a couple of looks today, a couple of different angles. Rule number one in skull cleaning is you want to remove the hide and as much meat and tissue as you can before you start your boil. Now, if that sounds like you've heard it before in a previous video, that's correct because I've said it in every video. Always the same. Get that hide off. I cut straight up the middle of the nose or cut from the jawline, then you're going to want to remove the eyeballs, the tongue, and the jaw. But on this particular animal, I'm keeping the jaw because I think it looks great on a doe for the finished product. Once the head has been skinned, I separate the jaws and I drop the heads and jaws into a large stock pot filled with water and a pinch of OxyClean and I'm going to bring that pot to a boil. Once your pot comes to a boil, I run at full speed. I'm just running as hot as I can. I get it to where it's a boil. I turn it way down so it's just starting to simmer and that eliminates the overflow. I just had posted a picture of an odd ad on Instagram with the bottom, like that, with the bottom jaw on it saying, hey, what do you guys think? My opinion is I don't like the jaw on anything with antlers or horns. Anything without antlers or horns, I like the bottom jaw. So as you know, I got some does in here and I'm saving the jaws to put back on there. Because if you just see a doe head sitting there, it's missing. You see a doe head and jaw, it looks all right. You get the deal. So I keep in like a little pasta strainer, I put the jaws in here because I'm gonna pull those and rinse those first. They're gonna finish faster. And because I have six animals in here, I wanna make sure I'm rotating fast and I'm not over boiling anything. The other question I get a lot is stink. Does it ever stink? It does not and it is delicious. Cheers y'all. Using a little 1600 PSI power washer, I pull those skulls out of the boil the moment that the skin on top of the nose splits, and then I just power wash off all the tissue, the meat, anything that's hanging on the bone, I wash off. As a rule, we say wash every hole and every orifice. Anywhere that there's meat or tissue, spray it clean. On the underside and back of the head, the most difficult areas, I always remove the auditory bull or the ear canal. I stick a screwdriver in the ear and I give it a pop and that removes that piece of bone. Then I take a 5 8 wafer bit and I drill that area out so it's nice and smooth. 
and that gives me the ability to get in and wash in and around the brain and all those ear canals and makes for a very clean product. When I was younger, my mom would say, hey, don't forget to wash your face and wash real good behind your ears. I never thought I would take those principles to YouTube later in life. That's some full circle stuff there. Hey, one quick joke. What did the doe say when she ran back in the woods? I'll never do that again for two bucks. Sorry, sometimes I get off topic. All right, we're going to want to pull that nose and nasal cavity out, and then we're going to get inside and pull the brain, and then our skulls are what I say 90% clean. The next step there is we're going to sweep up our mess, and in the same pot we boiled in, I'm going to put 50% water 50% hydrogen peroxide liquid developer from the beauty supply. Run over to your beauty supply and ask for 40% by volume liquid developer. Mix it 50-50. Drop your skulls in. Make sure you're putting them in upside down so peroxide is getting in the brain hole. Then bring that whole thing to a boil. Once it hits a boil, shut it off. Pull the skulls out, rinse them clean, and set them in front of a fan to dry. Dough day. These have dried overnight. I'm going to right now show you why I don't like doughs. Any dough I've ever cleaned looks exactly like this. So I don't think it's something I'm doing wrong. I do think it's me being very critical of the actual skull. So I had done two pigs in the exact same mix. You guys saw that. So we did the does, did the pigs. See how much brighter the pigs are and how much lighter the does are? Same everything. Nothing changed. Um, let's just walk it over right now. Can you see the mild hues of color in there? very very typical of a dough so that's all right again i'm not trying to change them or make them something they're not i just don't like the color of doughs and how they turn out and it's not like oh it's a mule deer dough or a white tip any dough i've ever done is like this i struggle with them they're harder for me to clean than they are a buck it's not a practice thing it just is what it is so last little step here is i'm going to give them a coat of mop and glow for those of you that watch all the time this is just redundant over and over and over for those of you who haven't I'm using flooring mop and glow I buy it at the grocery store Home Depot Ace Hardware I buy it everywhere I'm using a 99 cent store brush and all I do once that skull is bright is I just brush on a real light coat and that is gonna settle into the bone. When you first put it on, it's gonna make it like, oh no, did I just yellow up the skull? No, you just temporarily hydrated it. It's gonna dry gin clear and white as the skull was when you took it out of the pot. But it will, at first glance, be like, uh oh, what's happening? Talked to a guy on the phone yesterday who was like, hey man, I don't know if I messed up. And by the time we got off the phone, he had walked back and looked at his skulls. And he's like, oh yeah, we're good. So, don't worry. Don't be alarmed. And I want to encourage you to try. This is not an exact science. I always try and give general rules of thumb. When I tell you 50% peroxide, 50% water, 
That's just a basis, just an idea, a rough general piece. Don't measure it. Don't get all caught up in it. Um, it's like being a good cook. Put an extra pinch of salt in there. Ain't going to hurt nothing. you got to try it a little bit. There is no exact science to every skull. So I give you those general guidelines to help you get there, and then you sort it out. I find that more often than not, my peroxide winds up a little bit less peroxide than water. Sometimes 80-20, sometimes 60-40. Sometimes 99.36. Just kidding. Just throwing stupid math out there because it doesn't work. But it's not an exact science. So wing it. I like to dry these in front of a fan. This little tiny fan right here works just so good for me. Super mild. It almost runs 24 hours a day. It's drying something almost every day. And it's easy. So, put your flooring mop and glow on there, let them dry, then I'm going to shrink wrap them up and send them off to the kids who harvested these deer. Should be a great memento. A lot of these kids, it was their first animal. Even if it wasn't, it's just great to have. And I'm glad I was able to be a part of it in some capacity. Even if it gets stuffed in a drawer in 10 years, those kids will pull it out and be like, hmm, I remember the day I took that one. A couple of questions that I, mm -hmm. A couple of questions that I think are gonna come up in this film is how do I know which is which? Like say which bottom jaw goes with which top of head, and um, they go together like a ring and pinion. So the teeth match and line up. If it was a deer jaw from another skull, they would not match. That's how I know. And how do I know one skull from the other? I actually engrave a little mark on the back. Uh, Say the kid's name is Joe, I put a little J in the back of the skull where you can't see it, then I match up Joe's skull with Joe's box. Alright, I glued the bottom jaw to the top of the head. I um, think they look nicer on display, something that we talked about in the first part of the video. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but um, I took a little unofficial poll there on Instagram that said, um, bottom jaw, what do you think? And it was on an odd ad. And the consensus from everybody was that if it's got horns or antlers, no bottom jaw. If it does not, bottom jaw looks good. This definitely looks better with a bottom jaw because there's no antlers. So to ship these, I simply use the, if it fits, it ships box. I save all the stuff, it's the holidays, so we get so much crud coming in. Save all that packaging, it's big money. I just stick them in there, roll them tight, and ship them. Awesome. I don't even put an invoice in there, because these are all no charge, so I don't have to worry about nothing. Box it, send it. Thank you for watching. Till next time.